Hello and welcome to today's video. Today uh, I'm reviewing a pen from Parker. Now I've reviewed a few Parkers over the years uh, and this is one that uh, I never uh, got around to reviewing and so I happen to have one now and it's the Parker IM. Now the IM is a one of their sort of lower end more affordable pen models something you might find at like an office supply store or you know sort of like uh, in the gift section of, of certain stores and stuff like that. So I'm going to talk about the parts and features, do a writing sample and talk about pros and cons. So, uh, the Parker IM was first introduced in 2006, and then went un underwent a bit of a redesign, you know, adjusting the, the clip and a few other things in about 2009. And at some point since then, it has uh, the nib has changed. So it was that sort of Lamy style tubular uh, nib. Uh, and it's more recently turned to the uh, more sort of standard looking nib. Uh, something closer in design to something you'd find on like the Parker Sonnet, for instance, as opposed to uh, the Vector or the Jotter from the other nib. This is the black CT version or chrome trim version. Um, there are multiple versions of this pen available. This is just the one I have. So let's talk about the parts and features. So snap cap, as I said, as I showed before. Nice. Top of the pen is a flat chrome coloured uh, little end there. You get the Parker arrow clip there. The cap swells out to a, a band here that has Parker engraved on it. It's a nice simple band, chrome coloured. The barrel continues along and then tapers down to another chrome end there. So it snaps off and you get another little uh, chrome section, a black uh, tapered section, chrome at the end and then this uh, nib, which isn't a huge nib, uh, but uh, I think it's sort of, in terms of uh, size, it's probably a little bit short, but decent sort of proportion uh, on this pen. It is a cartridge converter pen, and those cartridges are proprietary to Parker, so you can't use Sound International in here. Um, I have a cartridge in here, this is a blue-black uh, Parker cartridge, just something I happen to have a few of them, so I thought I'd use them. Uh, but yes, you can get a converter for this, although one is not provided with the pen. The pen body is a lacquered brass uh, material, and it's a nice sort of glossy, shiny black finish. Uh, and the section is, uh, as far as I can tell, is plastic. And uh, the threads there are plastic as well. The clip on the Parker IM is flexible, but it doesn't feel overly sturdy. Uh, so while it is functional, you probably wouldn't want to put it under too much stress. The pen does post and it posts relatively securely, makes a bit of a back weighted pen. We'll talk about that in a little bit, um, but it does post quite securely. Time for a quick size comparison now. And I don't have my uh, traditional army Safari with me. I'm currently on the road as I'm filming this. So I've got a Pilot V pen here to give you a sense of it. It's not a huge pen, uh, but it is certainly a decent size. If we look at these uh, uncapped, you see they come in very similar size and then posted once again, it's a fairly sort of standard sized pen. So what are the dimensions of the Parker IM? Well, it's 138 millimeters when it is capped. It's 120 when it's uncapped, so it's an okay length. Might be a bit small for some people, but I think it's an okay length. Uh, posted, it's 155 millimeters, which is a good length. And the section goes between sort of like nine and 10 millimeters. So some people might find it's slightly on the smaller size. Um, the other thing to take into account, of course, is because that nib is quite sort of short in the way it is uh, seated in that section, uh, the, the grip section there not also being particularly long means you might be holding it back on that step. And you can notice it, although it's not particularly sharp or anything like that. The pen weighs 30 grams, 18 in the body and 12 in the cap, roughly. Um, so unposted, the balance is quite nice. It's a nice sort of gentle weight in the hand. When you post it, it does become back heavy. You're putting a decent amount of pen weight back on the pen. And this is where a lot of that weight is. So you do definitely feel that just starting to sort of creep back in your hand. Before I do a writing sample, I'm just gonna talk about the price. So it is 50 to 60 Australian dollars. You can, now you can often find this pen a lot cheaper. It's one of those pens that does get put on special and things like that quite a lot. Um, but 50 to 60 Australian. 40 to 45 euros, around the 30 US dollar mark. So not an inexpensive pen, but certainly um, by Parker standards, quite affordable. So let's now do this writing sample. We have here the Parker IM. 
and this is a medium. It also comes with a fine nib, as far as I've been able to find. Uh, uh, steel nib, of course. Um, the ink in this is Parker Quink. Blue black. Which uh, is a, one of these sort of standard run blue blacks I actually quite enjoy. It's not super dark, it's a little bit on the blue side, but it's a nice enough ink. Let's do the writing sample. So it writes well enough, it's smooth enough. It's not the smoothest pen, but it is smooth enough. You see there it kept up with the faster writing. I do find this has a tendency to hard start just a little bit occasionally or skip on particularly sort of smooth uh, papers. Uh, but generally speaking, it writes well enough. Reverse writing, it's okay, not particularly great. Um, and flex writing, no, it's a very, very stiff nib. Uh, but you know, it does all the job. Now in terms of wetness, it's not super wet. I wouldn't say it's dry, but it's definitely not a wet uh, writing pen. So let's now talk about some pros and cons for the Parker IM fountain pen. Now, I will also say this comes in like rollerball and ballpoint pen versions. You could often get in gift sets, all that kind of stuff. And it is presented very nicely. It often comes in either a blister pack or in a simple box from you know, your stationery stores and things like that. So the presentation is fine uh, and is not sort of done in their sort of fancy Parker way <laughs> by any stretch. But some cons. Firstly, there's no converter. Uh, you know, and the parking converters are not cheap. They run well over $10 in Australia. Uh, so you are adding a pretty decent price to be able to use this pen with a converter. My suggestion is that it comes with a uh, cartridge. Use that, then refill that as I will be doing with these blue black cartridges once I've worked my way through those. Uh, other cons for me are the balance when it's posted. I find it unposted, it's nice enough, uh, but when it's posted, it's just a little bit back heavy. Uh, and I find that just not a particularly super comfortable uh, way of writing, particularly with the shorter nib and the uh, slightly smaller section there. As I said in the writing sample, it does have a tendency to hard start occasionally and can run slightly on the drier side. Now this nib is better than the previous nibs that came on this pen. Uh, the nib on the vector writes even drier again, um, I have found, um, but this one writes okay. So, you know, it just has a tendency to run a little bit on the drier side or hard start occasionally. The other issue I have with this pen is that, like, and I don't say these kinds of things very often, but it's just a little bit of a boring writer, a bit of a, you know, uh, there's not a lot to sort of inspire you to use a pen like this. And when I'm using some of my other Parkers, like the uh, Jewel Fold, which of course is a much more expensive pen, uh, and some of the vintage Parkers I have, I love writing with them. I don't get that same experience from this pen. However, some uh, pros, well, uh, the nib, when it's writing, writes nice and smooth and all that kind of stuff. So that's a nice pro. And also it's got a solid, good build quality and it comes in and in at a reasonable price point. Now I will say, it comes in at a reasonable price point for Parker. This is a Chinese made pen. Parker used to be made uh, in England um, and now they're made in China. So this is a Chinese made metal lacquered pen with a steel nib, no converter, I think it's at the slightly pricey end of its price point, considering as though there are many metal pens made in China that retail for a heck of a lot less. Um, you know, you can get replacement nibs for it. You can buy uh, those nib unit sections from some retailers and all that, and that's great. Um, but I think it's just a little bit on the pricey side for what it is, and not that exciting a pen. If you are not a fountain pen user, and someone gave you this pen, it would be lovely. But if you are a consistent fountain pen user and you have a collection of pens, and if you're familiar with some of the slightly uh, higher end Parkers, this is not gonna be the pen for you, I don't think. That's just my take on it. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you wanna stay up to date with the videos that I produce, and please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or other social media as uh, the underscore offstage underscore me. 
um, and I'd love to hear from you there. If you've got a way you'd like to support the channel, get in touch, I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, whatever they may be, and I'll talk to you soon.